we have come together to worship the Lord, uh, and as we do so, we uh, read from the book of Psalms, Psalm 146, the first uh, six verses. It is on page 2626. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord my soul. I will praise him as long as I live. I will sing to my God all my life. Don't put your trust in human leaders. No human being can save you. When they die, they return to the dust. On that day, all their plans come to an end. Happy is the man who has the God of Jacob to help him and who depends on the Lord his God, the creator of heaven, earth and sea, and all that is in them. Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning as your people <coughs> whom you have bought us with price, a price that nobody else could pay. You sent your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lived obediently and suffered and went to the cross. He rose again in order to gather us all together, to reconcile us with you. We are so indebted of the grace that you have shown us, and not only us, but you showed your grace to the entire universe. Sometimes we think about and we are overwhelmed by your love. <coughs> and it is this love that brings us together to honor you, to praise you, and to worship you. <coughs> Lord, this morning we confess that though your love is constant for us, we go astray, we do our own things, we commit sins, and we do the things that do not please you. And so Lord, with a heavy heart, we humbly come to you and ask for your forgiveness. Forgiveness that you have made available through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And in his name, we receive this forgiveness. Lord, we also ask you to be with us according to your promise that where two or three gather in your name, there you are in their midst. Lord, we welcome you in our midst. And we ask you to inspire us once again through partaking in the communion, the bread and the body, and the blood that you shed for us. Through this, we want to deepen our fellowship with you and with each other. Be with us as we offer our worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand together and worship God as we sing our first hymn in our hymn sheet, Mission Praise number 991, I Will Worship. A reading from Matthew, The Temptation of Jesus. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After spending 40 days and nights without food, Jesus was hungry. Then the devil came to him and said, If you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, The scripture says, Man cannot live on bread alone, but needs every word that God speaks. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, the holy city, set him on the highest point of the temple, and said to him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down, for the scripture says, 
God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up with their hands so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. But Jesus answered, But the scripture also says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in all their greatness. All this I will give you, the devil said, if you kneel down and worship me. Then Jesus answered, Go away, Satan. The scripture says, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left Jesus and angels came and helped him. Thanks be to God for this his holy word. We are already into Lent season. The Lent season is observed all over the world. Um, it is sometimes uh, linked to certain denominations who are more uh, inclined to celebrate it or observe it uh, more seriously. And Presbyterian congregations uh, has uh, become also uh, quite important to observe the land, although traditionally it was not the case. However, since we all now are aware of land and we, we observe it, the Bible is full of the examples and the events where people uh, fasted as we or many people do through the land. Uh, and partly because of the examples and the events that are found in the Bible and the, the, the fasting that is mentioned in the New Testament and the Old Testament uh, was observed quite seriously. The prophets and teachers of Antioch uh, fasted as we read in the book of Acts chapter 13. And we read Jesus teach us that when the bridegroom, namely himself, is, take, is taken out of the world, his disciples will fast. Now if we look at the New Testament uh, especially, we find more teaching on fasting than about repentance and confession or even about the baptism or the communion. And so it becomes very important to think about fasting during this period, uh, Lent namely. And so this morning I want to speak about uh, uh, fasting and how Jesus took it so seriously to combat uh, Satan and his temptations. And as we do so, I would like us to think about this. Ask ourselves individually, can I face the incredible challenges to my Christian life without sharing in the fasting of Jesus? Can we as a church experience the fullness of Christ's power and blessing? without humbly seeking the Lord in fasting. And as we do so, let us think about fasting in Christian life and its importance. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 16, we read that after be Jesus being baptized, he came up out of the water and the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove. Now the Holy Spirit had always been with Jesus. It doesn't mean that that was the only occasion when Holy Spirit actually came upon Jesus. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, but this descending of the Holy Spirit was a special anointing or outpouring 
or if as some people like to say the baptism that would rest on Jesus for his three years earthly ministry. He was baptized to identify with us in his submission to God's rule and righteousness. He didn't need any confession of sin so that he could be baptized, not at all. His baptism was different from ours. His baptism was only to identify with us. And the Holy Spirit came on him as he does on us to empower him and to guide him in the huge demands of his ministry. And this is especially important to see when we notice in the next verse in our reading, chapter 4, verse 1, what the Spirit first uh, act is. And the, fir the first act of the Spirit is this. It says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil or te tested by the devil. The first act of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' ministry is to lead him into the wilderness and to expose him to Satan's testings. Now under the, the Spirit's leading, Jesus prepared himself to meet the devil by fasting. The Spirit of God willed that the Son of God be tested on his way into the ministry and he willed that Jesus triumph in his testing through fasting. Jesus triumphed over the great enemy of our souls through fasting. Now we tend to think that sometimes when, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He interacts with us, He acts within us. He would bring us joy, He would bring us uh, happiness and all the other things. Here we find the ministry of the Holy Spirit for some could be that he would lead us into the wilderness where we feel alone, where we feel hungry, where we feel abandoned so that our faithfulness to God be tested, our obedience to him be tested and that's exactly what we find here in our text. It seems to me that this story should really get our attention. Here is Jesus standing on the threshold of the most important public ministry in the history of the world. On his obedience and righteousness hangs the salvation of the entire world. No one will escape the judgment without this ministry of the obedient suffering and death and resurrection. And God wills that at the very outset the ministry be threatened by Satan, by the testing and by the temptation. So that Jesus' lowliness and his faithfulness and his obedience be tested. And all of the hundreds of things that Jesus might have done to fight off this tremendous threat to salvation, he is led to fast. Yes, to fast. If Satan had succeeded in deterring Jesus from the path of humble suffering obedience, there would be no salvation. We would still be in our sins and without hope. And therefore we, are, we, we owe our salvation to the faithful fasting of Jesus. This is a remarkable tribute to fasting. Think about it. Jesus began his ministry with fasting. 
and he triumphed over his enemy through fasting. Now as we read the text, we find that Jesus responds to the Satan or the devil. Actually, all three of them came from the book of Deuteronomy. Now if you'd like to, to open uh, uh, your Bibles, uh, if you have them in front of you, you can turn to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8. Especially read chapter, uh, verse 1 to 4. And all these three responses that I mentioned came from the book of Deuteronomy. For instance, we find, man shall not live by bread alone. And Deuteronomy chapter 8, 3, we see, we shall not, uh, he said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, we find, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only. This is very important. Here is Jesus led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness and to counter the temptations of Satan. Jesus quotes these passages from Deuteronomy. And all these three things were actually said by Moses to the people of Israel about the time of their testing in the wilderness. Now look at the verse 2 and 3 in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and you can see the, the remarkable parallels with what Jesus says in the wilderness to what, Je what Moses said to his people. Let me just, just point out these parallels to you this morning. The first thing that we notice is that you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness as Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness. These 40 years as Jesus there was in the wilderness for 40 days that he might humble you testing you as Jesus was tested to know that, uh, that, 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 that what was in your heart whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you be hungry as Jesus was made hungry by his fasting and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. There are far too many similarities between what is happening to Jesus here in the wilderness and what was happening to the people of Israel in the wilderness. What does that mean? Well, it means that God is now preparing to deliver his people, the new Israel, from the Egyptian bondage of sin and to the promised land of his forgiveness and righteousness and peace and joy and eternal life. To this he has sent a new Joshua. Just as Joshua led people to the promised land. He has sent a new Joshua. Jesus is actually in Greece same as Joshua. This new Joshua stands as the same uh, as Joshua in the Old Testament. And on their behalf he will now be led by God into the wilderness. It will be 40 days to represent 40 years. And through that he will lead his people into new promised land of forgiveness and righteousness. What was the aim of Jesus fasting? No, it simply means two things. First of all, fasting is part of his testing the way hunger was for the people of Israel in the wilderness. But that does not mean fasting wasn't a means of battling Satan. Because fasting reveals where the heart is. And when the heart proves to love God more than bread, 
Satan does not have the foothold he would have in us otherwise. Secondly, the people of God are often called to go without the ordinary means of life. Fasting is a brief volunteer uh, or voluntary experience of uh, this deprivation to prove our hearts that our love is for God and for his word and not, not for the things of this world. The Lord reveals what is in our hearts through fasting. It reveals what controls us, things or love for God. Richard Foster says in his, in his book on the chapter uh, that he wrote for, about fasting, he says, more than any other single discipline, fasting reveals the things that control us. This is a wonderful benefit to the true disciple who longs to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. We cover up what is inside us with food and other good things, but in fasting, these things surface. If pride controls us, it will be revealed almost immediately. You see, David said, I humbled my soul with fasting. If anger, bitterness, jealousy, strife, fear, if they are within us and they control us, they will surface during fasting. Now we can rejoice in this knowledge that these things not only will surface, but we will be healed from these. We will be, uh, uh, we will be, uh, taken away from these things and focusing on God and his love for us. Fasting will reveal who we are slave to, what our bottom line passion is. In other words, fasting is God's testing ground and healing ground. Will we murmur like the, the, uh, like the people of Israel as they did with, when they went out with food? Without food, when they went out with food? Or will we live by the every word that proceeds from the mouth of God as the scriptures say? So the fasting is revealing to ourselves who we are, what controls us, and confessing to God what is in our hearts. And so the aim of fasting is that we come to rely less on worldly things and more on God and on his word. That is exactly what Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 says. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This morning, I want to challenge us all to think about what controls us. Do we want to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God? Do we rely on Him than things? This is the reminder of what God has done for us, what His promises are. And as we do this, as we partake in the communion, we do exactly what Jesus is saying here. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of his mouth. Jesus said, do this. Take part in the communion in the memory of me. And by doing so, we demonstrate that our love for him is more than, for our, uh, than our love for the things. Let us come together and show that we love God and his word more than anything else. Amen. We
come together now to worship by our offerings and as we do so we sing mission praise number 331 in heavenly love abiding let us pray loving god we thank you that you have brought us together to worship to to worship you and honor you lord we know that you have loved us your love is so great that we sometimes think why on earth you love us so much but we know that you are creator you created us to be in fellowship with you and you want us to be close to you and we send we decided to go away from you but through your son you have brought us together again and it is this love that that helps us to respond to you in worship in giving our offerings to you too and so lord we bring these offerings to you as a response to your love and ask you to receive them multiply them and use them for your glory alone in jesus name we pray amen and let us now prepare ourselves for the communion this morning and as we do so we sing mission praise number 723 we are guest invited this morning we come together uh, to lord's table to share in his fellowship and to obey the command that he asked us to do he especially asked us to remember him until he comes again and this act of worship this act of celebration of the communion especially especially important because it reminds us three things first thing it reminds us who we were where we come from we were sinners we abandoned god we left him and we decided not to have fellowship with him and then it reminds us who we are now although we were sinners we couldn't help ourselves without hope we had no chance of escaping escaping god's judgment but now through jesus christ through his suffering his death and resurrection he has provided us the opportunity to be united with him again and to be without a uh, fear of that judgment that hanged over our heads who we were who we are now we are his sons and daughters as john says those who believe in him are called his sons we are sons and daughters now and thirdly it reminds us who we will be in glory as we pass on through this life and we receive the eternal life the glory with jesus who we were who we are and who we will be when jesus comes again as he said and so it is our special pleasure and privilege to be able to partake in these elements remembering jesus death and his resurrection it was jesus desire to have me with his disciples before he was crucified and so on the night he was betrayed he took the bread and after he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body broken for you do this in memory of me in the same way he took the cup and he said this cup is a new covenant in my blood 
shed for the forgiveness of the sins of many. Drink from it, all of you, in memory of me. And we are glad to do just that. Just before we partake in these elements, let us pray to God asking him to make this special occasion very special for us. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity, opportunity of reflection, who we were, who we are, and who we will be. And we thank you that this communion reminds us of all these things. Lord, we pray that this ordinary bread may be sanctified, may become your body for us, for the nourishment of our spiritual life, constantly reminding us that we belong to you. We also pray for this wine, the wine which reminds of your blood, shed for us, removing all our sins, making us clean, making us righteous. So, Lord, we take this ordinary juice and we set it apart for this special use. And we ask you to make these elements, make this communion for us a joyful occasion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> So on the night Jesus was arrested, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Eat from it, all of you. And after that, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this time of reflection, time of fellowship, time of worship. We thank you that you have spoken to us, you have challenged us to think about where our heart lies, what is our passion. And we thank you that you have reminded us we need to rely on you, on your word. We thank you that we can receive this message this morning, Lord, and we can continue to live the life that may be pleasing to you. We especially thank you for the opportunity of celebrating the communion. And we know, Lord, that it is by your grace that we have been saved. It is by your grace that we have the opportunity to come together. It is by your grace that we belong to you. Lord, we pray that all our singing, our reading, our praying, our taking part in these elements may be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us now conclude our service this morning by singing Mission Praise number 582. 582. 
And now as we go from here, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the presence of Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always.